Hallelujah. We continue with that series. Now today, I want us to move on to something that is very, very important once again in this subject of prevailing in prayer. Prevailing in prayer. And we are going to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 5. This is what the Bible says. I stood between the Lord and you at that time. This is Moses speaking. The children of Israel. He says there are moments when I stood between you and between between you and, and God. You remember there was a time when Moses was on the mountain and uh, God tells him, go down. Those guys have rebelled against me. They have met a, a, a calf. They are worshiping it. And God's anger was waxing hot on the nation of Israel. And God wanted to wipe it away. But Moses said, Lord, if you truly, truly, if you truly want to destroy the children of Israel, then blot me out of, blot my name out of the book of life. This is how powerful an intercessor can can go. An intercessor comes to a point where, having understood the judgment of God, having understood the severity of the judgment and the anger of God, an intercessor will dare stand in the presence of God and tell God, God, you cannot destroy these people. And Moses says, Lord, if you want to destroy these people, then remove my name from the book of life. Don't have my name in the book of life if you are going to destroy these people. Give them an opportunity. It is possible they will repent. It is possible they will change. It is possible they will come to the knowledge of your glory. That, is, that shows the intensity, the love, the concern of a man and a woman who prevail in prayer. How his heart and his attitude is towards the people he is praying for. You cannot pray for the people you hate. You must have the love of God lavished in you in order for you to pray for people. When you pray for the government of your country, you need a love, love of God to be lavished in your heart for that president, for that prime minister, for that king, for that leader of your country. So that when you go in the presence of God, you are praying from the system of love. You say, God, will you not change the heart of this man? He is the president of our country. He is the prime minister of our country. He is the king of our kingdom. Lord, will you not touch his heart? God, I'm praying in the name of Jesus. God, because you say in your word that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Isn't his heart also in your hand, O oh God? Will you not deal with our president? Will you not deal with our prime minister? Will you not deal with our king? Will you not deal with our chancellor? God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And God will surely deal with with the heart of that leader. God raised Moses. Moses was not just a, a prophet who led Israel out of bondage to the promised land. Moses was an intercessor. He was a man who prevailed between God and man. He prevailed in prayer. He had a ministry of intercessory to God in heaven over the people of Israel. There are things, let me tell you something. Today, all over the world, countries of the world are going through serious economic crisis. Back in Kenya, in my, back at home in Kenya, the situation is dire. Is, I mean, is, is, is dire. The, the situation is terrible. You, uh, I have seen the Americans and how they, I have traveled to UK, you know, many European countries and the situation is the same. I've gone to, to Zimbabwe, the situation is the same. Countries and nations are going through difficult times. And oftentimes when things of this kind happen, all of us as citizens of those countries, our anger is kindled against those in power. And we complain and we curse and we threaten and we wish them adversity. But let me tell you something. We have a duty as God's children to intercede for these people. 
Because their hearts as kings, their hearts are in the hands of God. So I present the heart of my president. I, I present the heart of my king, of my prime minister, of those who are in authority, of my governor, of my senator, of my members of parliament or county assembly. I present their heart to God that God may deal with their hearts and soften them and break the pride from off their hearts and cause them to be a people that are tuned to the Spirit of God. Moses says, I stood between you and God. I was an intercessor. I prevailed in prayer. And actually, each one of us who really knows the Bible, you saw how Moses prayed for the children of Israel. How he could tell God, if you are going to destroy the children of Israel, God, don't you think the nations of the world will laugh at you? And they say, Yehovah took them out of Egypt and he could not take them into the promised land. That is the same thing we need to do as we intercede for those of brothers and sisters who have backslidden, who are becoming wayward. Are we not able to say, God, will you not have mercy on these brothers and will you not bring them to yourself? God, I know this brother has committed sin. He has done a terrible thing. But you are a God of mercy and compassion. God, will you please bring him back to yourself? Will you kindly appear to him? Will you soften his heart? Will you, oh God, remove this self-condemnation from him and open his eyes to see and his heart to understand that you are a loving, caring master and that he will come to you and that you will wash him and you will cleanse him in your blood? We need people to stand in the gap. We, we have had enough people that are judgmental. We now need intercessors to bring the nations and our ministries and our families to a place of the blessings of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. That I give you praise and glory for your faithfulness and goodness. Thank you, Lord, for allowing your Holy Spirit to come into my life and to bless me and to uh, remind me of the need to be an intercessor. I give you praise and glory, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Spiritual nourishment, click on subscribe button below. Click on the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another video.